she is. Beautiful. What is it? The Strathmar pendant. Designed by the court jeweler for George II's consort, Queen Caroline. Unfortunately, it never found favor with her. She complained the emeralds did little to enhance her pale complexion. Yes, I had the same trouble with sapphires. Consequently, the pendant was given to the Duke of Strathmar in 1746 as a token of royal gratitude for his support at the Battle of Culloden. What's it worth today? Approximately two million pounds. Why us? I mean, why isn't it in a bank vault or the Tower of London? It isn't a bank vault. But on the night in question, I need to put my hands on it at a moment's notice, out of banking hours. I see. Where will it be? Here. Here? It's the most convenient place. It's a gift for Sheikh Abdul Harakman. Ah, yes, well, he's always dropping in. Whose yacht is due on Tuesday. He'll be leaving before dawn Wednesday morning. And you're going to just hand him two million quid? Some gift? token of Mr. Havant's appreciation for a highly successful business deal. Ah, so it isn't a gift, it's a sweetener. Abdul Harachman, isn't he Minister of War for one of those Arab trucial states? And a sweetener for a Middle East arms deal. A defense contract. It's all perfectly legal, common business practice. Yeah, bribery and corruption. Without it, there will be no deal. George II is turning in his grave. I doubt it. Bribery and corruption wasn't exactly unknown in the Hanoverian court. Where's Frederica? Sweating it out in the computer room, working on that other little job you dropped into our laps. I'd better see how she's getting on. Um, you might check over the security arrangements with Mr. Havant's aides. It won't be long. You wouldn't object if one of us shared your vigil? They can't object, Mark. I insist. Oh, so while we babysit the ball, you babysit us? We thought perhaps you might be glad of the company. Not me. I'm all tied up on Tuesday. So am I. The Jefferson thing's just coming to the boil. I've just made an appointment with Mrs. Craddock. We know who's drawn the short straw then, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> now, perhaps if you were to try a five-letter subroutine adding consecutive numerals, Do you mind? I mean, do you mind, boss? You have had me sweating over this thing for the past seven bleeding days. I tried a series of five-letter subroutines in the first hour of the first day. Of course you did, Frederica. I'm sorry. And so am I. Security codes are always so bloody difficult to crack. This one's like looking for a needle in a haystack. So don't come here looking for good news. I did say it wouldn't be easy, but it is crucial we find the key. The information locked up in that disk is vital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just hope you're right. Because I would hate to crack this particular code, only to find that there's a game of space invaders under there. Hey, Mario, Giacento, Lombarini, ottimo. Godfather of Godfathers commissioned the least. Eh? Frankly, Frederica, I doubt if the Mafia Supremo would waste his time on space invaders. Not unless he could persuade them to bring in a rocket full of cocaine with them. Hidden somewhere under those numbers are 700 names and addresses throughout the UK. Almost as many as what's in my little black book. The names in your little black book don't belong to dope dealers and pushers, do they? Whereas the Lombardini list, a lot of people would sell their souls for access to it. Well, 
I would settle for a good night's kip. Not exactly Fort Knox, is it? Not exactly. But then you aren't paying for Fort Knox, Mr. Hammond. I'm paying for the next best thing. The terms I've agreed with Mr. Beaumont are quite exorbitant. Actually, I think it's ideal. It's compact, fireproof, and tamperproof. It has an adequate locking system and a reasonably secure combination. It's in full and constant view of all three desks. Yes, 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 yes. Blimey. You look as if you could do with a coffee. Ooh, a bucket full. Sweet and black. I've got a job for you, Fred. An all-night watch. Oh, do me a favour, Prue. I've been working at that computer for 14 hours a day. I am boggle-eyed. You'll have a week to recover. The sit-in's not until next Tuesday. But then I won't have any eyes at all. I'm afraid it's a question of foot de milieu. Maggie and I have previous engagements. Oh, well, that's nice, isn't it? So why are you two are off on a binge? I have to hang around in the cold, keeping tabs on some extra matrimonial. Not extra matrimonials. This. Oh, that's horrible. I bet that's worth a bob or two. Two million. Give or take a few hundred thousand. Thank you. <laughs> so Oi. you won't be out in the cold. You'll be right here in the office with one of these young men to keep you company. That'll be me. Peter. Peter Stanford. Fred. Short for Frederica? Yes. Look, I'd like to go outside, familiarise myself with the area. Right. Well, uh, I could do with a bit of fresh air. I'll show you. Good. You will be issuing firearms. Guns invariably bring trouble. There might be more trouble if she wasn't armed, Prudence. All right. The whole thing makes me very nervous. Don't worry. Peter will look after her. Look after her? By the time Fred's finished with him, he'll be the one who needs looking after. What are you? This geezer's mind or something? Something. You don't look like one. I mean, where's your cauliflower ear and broken nose? Where's your tight bun and horn-rimmed glasses? Hey. Well, I mean, they told me you were a computer operator. You don't exactly look like one. <laughs> and tell me, what do I look like? A million dollars. Not as much as the pendant. All right, then. Ten million, nine hundred and seventy-six thousand, four hundred and thirty-eight dollars. <laughs> you look like a couple of quid yourself. Thank you very much. So you say you won't pay well, this geezer? Very well. It's the only reason I stay with him. What's his business? Basically, he's an arms dealer, but he's got his finger in lots of other pies, you know, this and that. A little bit of the other. So you don't like him, then? You know what I'd really like to be? Something in the city. They wear monogrammed socks in the city. I've always wanted monogrammed socks. A whiz kid banker, a swish motor salesman. Hmm. I'm sorry. Well, that's what I would have taken you for. Certainly not a minder. Well, actually, I'm more than a minder. I've made myself indispensable. How? I know more about his business than he does. I've got it all stored away up here. Ram. I beg your pardon? Random access memory. Computer term. Oh, computers, they're double Dutch to me. I was born too early. Well, you've seen enough out here. What about dinner? I thought you'd never ask. Tonight? Give me your phone number and I'll. She'll stay dry. Her attention doesn't wander. Oh, Mr. Stanford, you mean? I've dinner with them every night since they met. Well, a lot better than that heavyweight she was planning around with last month. God, where the hell is she? It's nearly ten to seven. I've got to be around to Jefferson's place in half an hour. Well, why don't you head off? I'll wait. Anyway, the Boy Scouts due at seven thirty. She hasn't cleaned this thing in a month. Go on, you beat it. I promise I'll wait until she arrives. Knock, bleeding, knock. Who's there? Oh, come on, don't muck me about. Oh, she looks ghastly.
leather kit. I woke up with a head full of rusty nails. Oh, I mean there, love. Ooh. Maggie, 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 mm -hmm. please. Right, I am off. You know the routine and the panic numbers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll see you tomorrow then. All right, you two. On your bikes. Have fun. Yes. Now for... Oh, no, no, not you. Come in. Come in. Have you got a little man in your head using a large road drill? I've got a gang of them. In my skull and in my stomach. Drill sent this. I love roses. How did you know? Checked your record. Rubbish. There is nothing about roses on my record, I can assure you. But you're definitely a rose type person. Well, no one's ever accused me of being that before. Just as you're a foie gras canapé, a smoked salmon, a champagne. I'm a backgammon type person. Am I right? Hmm. Anyway, quaff the first glass, sip the second, and here's to your sparkling eyes. Well, I wonder what that's going to do to the vindaloo. Hair of the dog. You do indulge. Hey? Backgammon. As a computer expert, I should think you should find it a snip. Never been known to lose. If you want to play for money, you're going to lose your shirt. Promises, promises. Backgammon. Impossible. Why? I can't lose that many games in a row. I'm a dab hand at this, honest. And Prue's an expert and she owes me a fortune. Plenty of time.
time yet. Plenty of time. I've never played so badly. I can't seem to concentrate. You've just met your match, that's all. How's your head? Come on, you can't still be hung over. You can't be. You're just using it as an excuse for losing. Peter, there's something wrong with the clock. It's going backwards. Don't change the subject. I tell you, it's... Tell me what? What about it? It's got no hands! Oh, yes. I could have sworn. Come on, stop fooling around. I've set up the next game. Give you a chance to get your revenge. By my reckoning, you owe me half a million quid. You're not all right, are you? Geezer like that one. I don't. And he goes to great lengths to let me know it. Are you stick at it. He pays the bills. It just doesn't figure. It's not your type at all. And he's heavy stuff. He'll put you right in it one of these days. Do you up like a kipper? I'm sure he will one of these days. I'm sure he'll leave me holding the can for something or other and then laugh as they send me up the swanny for a fool does. Yes, I'm sure he will. I think I'd better go and check the tomfoolery. Is that necessary? Reminds me I'm working. Okay, Fred, maybe you're right. Maybe I will get out. Maybe I'll leave after this job, after the shake has collected the pendant. But it's cold out there in the real world, you know, bloody cold. And remember, I've got expensive tastes. I like good food, good wine, a nice warm fire to come home to. That's the trouble. Safe and sound. Like the Vindaloo, for instance. I didn't say that. I 
think I'm going. <laughs> no, you're not. It's easy to imagine a shadow on a lousy TV screen. But why was the screen activated? I don't know. Look, there's a storm brewing up out there. Atmospheric conditions. What with this video system? It's a closed circuit. The camera and the screen have to be activated by an infrared sensor beam. Well, there has to be someone out there to trigger it off. It's the same as what's in the computer room. So you want me to go outside and check? No, no, I can't. Come on. I Let's said go. I'll go! I'm the one that's seeing the things. Just check me on the monitor. The door release button is under that desk, right? Come back in. It was me. Rubbish. Come on. Let's have another game of backgammon. In a minute. You go and sit down. Look. It's a long way from Smithfield, eh? Hey? You told me at lunch. Your family will work in the meat market. My brothers, I saw four of them. Meat porters. Been there ever since they left school. Big, hefty bleeders they are. It floored them when I got into computers. Takes them all their time to count up to ten, you know. And yet they can add up quicker than a bookie. It's just an echo, I suppose. Just a rabbiting on. I like it. Oh, it gets awfully boring. Not for me. I like hearing about big families. I was an only child. Parents very conventional, very staid, very quiet. Yes, that's what I remember most of all. The house was always so very quiet. I missed noise. The noise I heard at school, for instance, the chatter, the laughing. The long time I had to break it. Um, the father hardly spoke to each other, let alone raise their voices. I don't think they had a lot of trouble. I often wonder what possessed them to get married in the first place. Seemed a good idea at the time, I suppose. Suppose. Peter. Yes? Have you ever had hallucinations? Seen things that weren't really there? Not since I changed to a decent brand of gin. I'm serious! So am I. I almost got to the point of seeing pink elephants. Long time ago, I was hitting the bottle. Lost my direction or something, I don't know. That stormed right on top of us. I don't drink gin. I swear I saw spiders and snakes. Oh, my God. This time it's really happening. This time it's for real. What is it? We're on fire! Fire? Detectives have all got a flash from what playing it. There's absolutely no right to do it. No right at all. Bro. I'm putting my staff in jeopardy and endangering the entire operation. Bro, get off the line. We've got an emergency. There's a fire hit. There's an emergency. No! I swear to God that 
there was smoke. No, you thought you saw smoke. And the phone? Hey, listen. It's the storm. Sometimes they play havoc with phone lines. Stop it! Stop what? Humoring me! It's not the storm, it's not the phone, it's not even the bloody monitor, it's me, isn't it? Take it easy, Fred. Strain, that's all. Just stress and strain. Your head full of those damn it's computers. It's nothing to do with computers. Programs, routines, hardware, software, list codes, numbers, Something commands. Something has happened to me! I've been poisoned. Poisoned? You couldn't have been. And if it was that damn tandoori, it would have hit you hours ago. Would it? Come on, come and have a rest. Well, it started with the backgammon. I mean, I've never played so badly before in my life. I deal in logic all the time. Absolute logic. That's why I never lose. Logic. Cause and effect. Time. Cause and effect. The clock went backwards. No hands. The shadow. The monitor that was never there. And the eye on the monitor. The eye? Oh, yeah. There was this great, big, blinking eye staring at me on the screen. So Oh, yeah. And the noise on the telephone. Oh, Jesus Christ, Peter, there's something wrong with me. This is no hangover. I'm high. High on something. Impossible. Why? Relax, Fred. Sit down, Angel. It's badly dependent. Not our sort of job at all. Guarding a bleeding safe. Playing nursemaid to a necklace. Do me a favour. I suppose you didn't see that either. See what? There was blood coming out of the safe. The safe was bleeding. That's what I said. Guarding a bleeding safe. Well, that's it. Cause and effect. You said time, plenty of time. You're doing this to me. It's you. Am I? Oh. I don't know. It started before the backgammon. Quaff the first, sip the second. You poison me! What did you put in that glass? Now, what do you think I put in it? It's not sound. 
struck. Lucigenic. Some sort. with me. So the pendant. Is that what you're after? Is that why you tell this to me? You didn't have to. You could have taken me any time. A little of this. What is it? Rather a clever mixture. Mainly lysergic acid diethylamide with a soup ton of mescaline and a little touch of sodium thiopental thrown in for good measure. Rather fun, isn't it? A little man in Newark, New Jersey knocks it out for us. It's completely colorless, odorless and tasteless, but extremely powerful. A sort of super-duper LSD cocktail. Stop it! And you took a whacking great dose, Fred. You'll be really flying soon. But watch out. The DTs are terrible. Oh, yes, you'll be seeing all sorts of weird and wonderful things soon. And then you'll do anything to be put out of your misery. Anything at all. In the meantime, the trigger words and phrases appear to take control, don't they? Sound distorts. Vision distorts, time distorts, all hallucinatory, but they seem so real, don't they? And you can just put that gun right back away. You won't be able to pull the trigger while you're aiming at me. It's impossible. Blasted ball, but it's not worth all the trouble. Maggie! I never really wanted the damn thing here in the first place. Rue! Am I going to die? Rather looks that way, I'm afraid. <laughs> take the Strathmore pendant. Just take it and leave me alone. The Strathmore pendant. I don't want that. I think it was all for the piece of jewellery. That was a setup, Angel. That was just to get us in. There's nothing else here. Yes, there is. Two things. Infinitely more valuable than the Strathmar pendant. for one and a little piece of computer software called the Lombarini list for another oh jeez how much longer difficult to say it's not a very exact method you see my lord and master George Haven has decided to move up in the world. Cocaine. It's a growth industry. Unfortunately, the Mafia want control of the lot. I need a doctor. Call one, then. Go on, call one. 
So, when George Havant heard about the Lombarini list, he realized if he could get control of that, he had the whole industry in the palm of his hand. Don't try and fight it, Fred. Oh. It'll only get worse if you try and fight it. <laughs> I understand there was a Frenchman in Marseille who lasted three and a half hours before he finally jumped from the 16th floor of the City Regeurs building. They say you could hear his screams from the other side of the old port. You'll probably turn your gun on yourself if the drug doesn't blow your mind clean out of your skull. You still have a little time. But at my back, I always hear time's winged chariot hurrying near. And yonder, all before us lie, deserts of vast eternity. Andrew Marvell, 17th century poet. Do you know his work at all? Time's winged chariot hurrying near. I wonder what he was waiting for. Not madness, eh? Not like you, Fred. Two things I want, Angel. Two things, then I'll give you a shot of something to put you out of your misery. Are you listening? Yes. Good. I want the Lombarini list. I want the disc and the access code for it. Do you hear me? The list and the access code. I haven't got the code. Come on, you've had that tape for nearly a fortnight. You're a computer freak. It. You're lying. No. Don't try and fight it, Fred. Don't try and fight it. It'll only get worse. Come on. We're going to the computer room. No. No one goes in there. The disk and the access code. List and the access code, please, Fred. What's the matter? You look as though you've just seen a ghost. I've just shot you! Really? I shot you! Wish fulfillment. Auto suggestion, all in the mind, Angel. Where's your sense of logic, Fred? Logic, I thought that was your strong suit. I'm here, large as life. It's you who's dead, or soon will be. Come on, I want the list and the access code now, before you really go over the edge for good. Now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's get into the computer room. No. Number in that keyboard, and let's get the door open. I, I can't. What do you mean you can't? Why can't you? Spiders and snakes and... Now listen. There's nothing on the keyboard, right? Nothing at all. It's clear. No spiders, no snakes, no pink elephants, just a keyboard. You can use the keyboard. addresses. Well, if I put this into the computer disk drive, I wipe the whole bleeding lot. No, Fred, you can't do that. You cannot do it. I'll have a flaming good try. <laughs> Listen to me, there's nothing on the key, nothing at all. No spiders. No spiders. No snakes. No snakes. No pink elephants.
run him down. Yeah, I should rid you of the bad dreams. All right, love. They weren't bad dreams, Maggie. They were real. Why didn't she use the phone? Maybe you told her she just couldn't use the phone. That'd be enough. She'll be all right now. Get her to bed. I'll come back and see her this afternoon. Thanks. Where's the real Strathmore pendant? In a bank vault in Geneva, I believe, guaranteeing the Strathmore family overdraft, Nigel told me. I hope you didn't know about it all along. <sighs> Perish the thought. Don't blame me, Fred, love. It was quite a dish. You can cheat it at backgammon. I thought public schoolboys were meant to play fair and all of that. He must have had a soft spot, though. He wanted you to have this. <laughs> 